Tori Ab was Dem- coming over and checking on me, and I was going, "Oh, piss off! Having a great time here." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't go to someone. Um, How big's your nose? <laughs> I'd rather be described as a, a funny twat fool than a poor thick skin, thick pink skin. <laughs> The girl asked for you for ID. You didn't have any, and you said Google. Me. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a good idea that we keep you anonymous, Ross. <laughs> yeah. Because as soon as these here, she has the illusion. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy, and me, Peter Crouch. How are you? Uh, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> How are you, homie? <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. I love your hair. Yeah, yeah, I have a little trim. You look sexy. Thanks. You know, I've I've been trying to get Pete to have this like old schoolboy haircut for years. You know, like an old soldier. Yeah. I love that style. <laughs> yeah, well the one. You know, like something from like Dunkirk. Yeah. Can't really, I can't really nail it. I've I've tried, but I just, it yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't really happen. It does. You've got it going on now. Yeah. Is it working? Hmm. Just need a nice little sergeant major uniform now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Prop box. No, it looks nice. Mm. You cut all your blonde out though. Everyone thinks Pete gets highlights and it makes me laugh, but his hair goes pure white in the summer. Mm. And you've kind of cut the last remnants of it off. It's a winter cut now, isn't it? It's a winter cut. It's into the autumn collection. <laughs> or, yeah, autumn collection. And the cardigan. Gone with the cardigan. Get a little bit of grief from a cardi, mate. I love that cardi. He, John said, I look like your Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I I, it's, it's nice, that. I mean, it's it's a nice texture. It's cosy. <laughs> Just for a bit of context, our John's sitting here in his undies and, and, it's, and a Mike Dean slaughters chickens t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, because he needs his pants for Crouch Fest. So I've just washed them for him. So you've had your hair cut? Uh, yeah, I've had a haircut. You've had, you've had your hair lightened. I've had it lightened, but I'm not sure. It's lovely. I'm not sure about it. No, it's really nice. What's wrong with it? No, nothing's wrong with it. I just don't know if I suit it. I haven't done my hair today, but I, I just don't know if I suit... Oh, John thinks I've had the same hairstyle for 20 <laughs> years. It was brown last week. <laughs> It was literally brown, like I've a ready seen brown. Your brown hair. You've always had blonde hair. No, it was darker than it is now. She's had it lightened. She looks, she looks, looks radiant, positively. I don't radiant. look radiant. I've actually got a chest infection and tonsillitis, <laughs> and all my face and glands are swollen. Great. So, yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. Why is that? We had quite a lively week, really, didn't we? Obviously, we had the wedding, which we'll talk about today. You know, you were a bridesmaid for the first time. Yeah. That's what the premise of this pod will be about. Mm. Um, but we had, a, we, had a, we had a few beers with your dad. That was quite good in Liverpool beforehand. What are you two laughing at? <laughs> oh. Stop. We'll send you this, Jake. <laughs> Get this online. It's funny when you go back over old pictures, that mm. what you look like. Yeah, but it's sign of the times. It's like now all the kids have got like the filters on and Stop laughing at me. It's, it's him, it's not me. Ross, do you want to get some pictures of you not, out? No, it's not me, it's him. Oh, Ross was ginger when he was born. <laughs> Still, Still is. Am. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry blonde, actually. Harvest gold. Harvest gold. Harvest gold. So our friend used to Auburn. say his hair, hair was, it's not ginger, he's harvest gold. <laughs> You're not ginger, though. No. When I get in the sun, I get a bit of lemon in my hair. Lightens off. Blonde, isn't it? It's it's it's, it's like dirty blonde. blonde. It's like a dirty blonde, isn't it? Blonde. <laughs> My favourite type of blonde. Reminds me of Ab. <laughs> <gasps> Will you stop googling me, John? I can see a picture in the in the in the mirror. That reminds me actually. Have we mentioned Google me when Ab said Google me? No. What's this? Uh, it was, Ab was out with John once, and uh, the fella would the fella wouldn't let. Um, the ID, then she, she said, no, I haven't got any ID, but I'm t- over 21, obviously. Yeah. And she said, well, I need ID. And he said, well, Google me. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. No, that is you, not that, You literally said, the words go, Google me. Number one, you weren't even there. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to what John's been saying. And number t- <laughs> You even are, yeah. I was getting the drinks in and she said, have you got ID? And I said, no, I haven't got any ID. And she said, well, I can't serve you. And I was getting the round for everyone. So I was like, I can't come back empty-handed. I've walked half an hour to this bar Mm. trying to get the drink. So I was like, I haven't got a bank card. I haven't got passport or driving license or anything. But I can Google my age. 
if you want. And she was like, what? But it wasn't like a Google me, I'm famous kind of thing. Well, you've literally just explained what, how I explained it exactly. So you, the girl asked for you for ID. You didn't have any and you said, Google me. <laughs> I didn't say Google me. I said, I can Google myself and show you my age. Google me. Google me. Catch that's, you on Google. But you know, that's the worst. That's something like that's happened to me before. Like we were in Toys R Us once yeah. getting um, presents for the kids. And oh, you know the way they the have best. like the freezer Ooh. at the till with the lolly ices in? Yeah. Ice lollies for, for anyone who's not the <laughs> So as she was scanning, so I got my lolly ice and I opened mine and started to eat it. Mm. And as she was scanning Pete's lolly ice, she said to Pete, oh, can I have your autograph? And obviously I'm oblivious to that because I hear it like every 10 seconds, Pete asking people, people asking Pete for his autograph. So as she was scanning his lolly ice and asking for his autograph, I said, oh, I've got one as well. <laughs> Meaning the lolly ice. <laughs> and she went, oh, Okay, she had the piece of paper like that and she went, oh, uh, yeah, I'll have yours as well. <laughs> and, I, and the worst thing is, Ross, I said, I went, she's a nightmare. He was like, she gets so jealous if someone asks me for an autograph. So and if not, you don't, if you ask me and not her, she goes mad. And I was going, no, no, no. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's like that joke my dad had. Well, it's not even a joke, it happened. My dad said he was in the services. He went to go to the bathroom. He's walking through the services and he's like, open the first door. There was a bit of piss on the seat, the second door. The third door, there was shit all up the walls. <laughs> and he was like, fucking hell. So he goes in the second one. He goes to the bathroom, comes out. and He's washing his hands. A fella goes up and goes, like, first door. I'm not going in there. Third door. And then he, he went, oh, God. And my dad went, I've just done that. <laughs> and he went, fucking dirty bastard. As in, I've just opened the door and done that. Well, I've just of... done that. Like, I've been in there and had a look. That's hilarious. Oh, the girl, the girl was, well, she didn't know what to do. She, she said, oh, I can, I'll have yours as well. I oh, hate doing an God, autograph. so funny. It makes me so worried. <laughs> what what? about? I don't know. I just don't like it. I just forget to spell your own name. Yeah, literally. <laughs> can't write. So funny that one though. So we've been with me dad. We we went. We've been to Liverpool, obviously mm -hmm. for the wedding. And we had a night out with me dad. Like I was like, I'm not going to drink because it's the night before the wedding. Mm. My dad took us out for a meal and took us to Lark Lane in Liverpool to this like little bar. And ever they had a singer on. Everyone was up singing, drinking. My dad came out in this cream. You no, know, we were talking about gilets a couple yeah. of weeks ago in this cream bubble coat <laughs> gilet. <laughs> Koi got some grief. And every and we walked past that was cream. We were like, Dad, you look like that. So there was like one of them little Fiat 500s. Fiat 500s. Yeah. And we were standing okay. next to that going, Dad, you look like that. <laughs> then there was a cream beetle convertible. And then he looked like that. And then he was like a, 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 a box. Is it like a Renault Picante or something like that? It's like, it's it's a big like box thing. And my dad was so upset. He was like, I bought this in Italy. And he was like, it's not cream, it's bone. <laughs> <laughs> and then the worst thing is, I saw him. He um, was like that. Sue. You look fat as fuck in that chair. <laughs> we were giving him loads of grief. And then the next day, um, I heard him. I was, he didn't know I was. I could see, but he was in the kitchen with Sue, and he was going, "I like this. What do you, do you, do you reckon?" He was like, "You know, he was actually gutted about it." I think. Uh, for, for a minute, it was nice. It's nice. We just, it was just oversized, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> Did he ring you? He was like, I was getting a lot of cream. It's not like one of those fitted ones. It's more like one of those hip hop ones. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was so nice and he put it in orange as well. I know, my dad would come and burnt oh. orange and bone. <laughs> He, he said to me, he's like, fuck, I didn't get the orange one. Oh, God, I'm getting so much grief. Oh. So funny. Dude, funny. But we've, um, funny, you've been, you know, it's Crouch Fest. It's two days till Crouch Fest. Mm. How's everyone feeling? Oh, I shit myself. So, our John and Ross have produced the whole sold out Wembley show for Crouch Fest along with you, Pete. Mm. How are you? I, I don't really want to talk about Pete's podcast on, our, on my podcast, but we can. Well, you know what? One night only. Bizarrely, we had to well, we'll link it back because um, <clears throat> obviously Crouch Fest, that would be amazing, like, no doubt. But uh, last night we had, a, like, an event um, at BrewDog where we just kind of, like, get a load of people uh, in and we kind of do, a, like, a live podcast with 25 people. It was great. And um, a lot of people were going up to Ross and saying, uh, 
oh my god because they listen to both they're like are you Ross from the therapy crowd <laughs> I am he <laughs> <laughs> he was all over it what's like, yeah. I am P I am he oh I am he yeah. yeah so Ross is getting a lot of love out there yeah so many girls fancy Ross on my yeah. on my Instagram mm. they slide in going is Ross single can I have his number and all that so I think it's a good idea that we keep you anonymous Ross <laughs> yeah. because as soon as he's here she has the illusion <laughs> As soon as they see you, like, you know, your popularity will yeah. plummet. definitely plummet. Yeah. To be fair, it was all blokes last night who were saying that. Yeah. No, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of, blo- it was a bit of a blokey event, wasn't it? But, yeah. Um, blokey. <laughs> it was a lot, you know, it's... Tip it's, for dick. <laughs> what I'm saying is he's getting a name for himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. He's getting a name for himself. He's our protege. Mm. Next podcast, hosted by Ross. <laughs> Ross and Lloyd. <laughs> Ross and Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, viewers, we can't have too many inside jokes because. Yeah, oh. yeah. um, <laughs> well, I think it's obvious that John looks like Spock at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. Bloody you gorgeous. You look nice, John. You know, it's been a really exciting week for you, Pete. You know, you've got mm. Crouchfest, you've, you've all been working so hard on this for six months, and, you know, I've been banished from the camp. I'm not allowed to get involved because... I, I think you make things ten times more stressful. <laughs> as much as I love you and you've got great intentions, I feel I feel like you... Well, it's funny that half the ideas that you're doing in mind. It is one idea that's, that's involved you in some way. You know, it, I did actually, it was originally my idea. But the one contribution I've had to Crouchfest has cost the most money mm-hmm. and is a logistical nightmare, mm-hmm. as you know. So I'm sorry for that, but I think it will make the show. But the reason I don't like you kind of too involved in it is because it does... No, because you have this weird thing about me. See, I want to be like Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. What? You know, they work together. They had the desks mm. together. They worked on projects together. And mm. every time I try and get involved with you, you're like, go away from me! You're like, why can't I just do anything on my own? Yeah, why do I you just... always have to get involved? You're t- taking over. But then you you come to me when you need me. No, I, I, and then you I, just throw I, your little I, I, bratish hissy fit. So I value your opinion. Victoria, I'm sure, wasn't a pain in the arse. Victoria was a fucking pain in the yeah, arse. Yeah, well, maybe, you know, like, I just feel like when you do get involved, you do, you are good at things and you do help. But um, you sometimes, you take over and you also... Overpowering in a, in a brash... In, in a brash. In an overbearing manner. <laughs> Loud in an overbearing manner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously the definition of brash. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I think I'm quite creative and I think my ideas are good and I, I just want to be in the gang <clears throat> mm. and you all shut me out. Now, you are in the gang. You, you, you've been a big help. You've just said, before we started this, you said, I am not allowed to come until it starts because you don't want me anywhere near No, it. I like your, I value your opinion and all that beforehand, but I don't want you getting stressed at the, at the venue. I want you to relax and have a good time. Mm. So Scott, Ellie's boyfriend's doing like the production. I've just sent him a voice note. <laughs> Scott, if you fuck this up, you're out the family. <laughs> no word of a lie. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> That's the kind of, you know, the, the G up that the team needs. Isn't <laughs> yeah. It? That's the love and encouragement we've become but accustomed he, to. No, he's, this he's is got, why you're, you're, you're not coming to it later. Yeah, but if someone said that to me, I'd be like, God, I, I'd best get me, you awesome, know, my yeah. best foot forward. Yeah. Everyone's different, aren't they? Scott I'm, can take that. I'm sure he can. Yeah, he's got I'm sure skin. he can. Thick skin. Thick pink skin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you know what was a nightmare? <clears throat> Halloween, obviously, we, we, we ended up missing out, really, on the kids' Halloween, didn't we? Because yeah. we, had, we had, the, had this event that we had to go to and, you know, we wanted to go to, but we kind of missed out on the yeah, so, festivities in the road. Mm. So Pete, the Peter Crouch podcast have got their own m and advert, which is incredible. You know, obviously, you wrote it. Mm. Yeah, no, we're really proud of it. John and Ross and it was a bit of fun that's ended up with being the lad, which is hilarious. So um, we went to the premiere in Leicester Square. Mm. So it was great. And you know what? Do you know what? I, my best part of the night was coming home with my Percy Pig teddy yeah. bear and my Colin the Cat and Miller teddy bear. I love them. The kids love them as well. I know, the kids are like, so happy. They've been carrying them around the whole time. Um, so my sister was, you know, all day carving pumpkins, you know, decorating the po- the porch. Getting she did the kids a great ready, job, didn't she? An amazing she? job. So I was like, she'd been doing the kids' face paints <laughs> the whole day and then sent me a picture of Jack 
and his face was just orange. <laughs> yeah. and it looked like, like he'd been tango. Do you know the <laughs> yeah, tango yeah, yeah, guy yeah. who just runs in and slaps the fella in the <laughs> yeah. face? He looked like that. I was like, hell, are you messed? And Ellie's really creative. You know, she's a hairdresser. Yeah. She does hair on movies and everything. And she just painted his face whole orange. And I was like, are you messing? And she got proper cover, didn't she? Did she? Yeah. She was like, that's what he wanted. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> what, did he, what, did, what was he in the end? I he think... was in um, Pokemon. Pikachu, oh, weren't he? Yeah, Pikachu. Not Pikachu, no, the other. Solzazard or something. The other yeah. one. Charizard. How do you know that? Dragon. Like geeks. <laughs> yeah. Are you into that? Are you into Pokemon? Not anymore. Yeah, but they would, used to watch it when they were kids. Not, not until I'm, I'm into Yu Gi Oh now. You into what? Into Yu Gi Oh now. I've got a weekly wine and it involves you and me. Okay. So my weekly wine is to myself. For like every time I have a few drinks, you know need to sing shallow on a mic in front of people and it's just it's got to stop <laughs> and then i send the video of it to like all my friends and they're all like what are you doing this has to stop this is becoming a problem now but I, i'm blaming you because i think because you're constantly telling me i'm an amazing singer when i'm not oh, I love when it. i've had a bit of dutch courage and there's someone with a microphone you know what, what does shallow go like again up oh, shut up <laughs> But I'll in, show the you wed- actually. No, yeah. no. in the wedding, no, in the wedding, in the wedding, I am. Um... Just like this, Russ. No, <laughs> no, 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 oh, no. Turn it off now, please, David. <laughs> <laughs> Get away! Please. Get away! Put it down now. Oh, I love you so much, babe. Put it down I now. I will. I'll put no. it down. I'll put it down. I don't want it. I can't if you hear get it. off me, I'll put it down. I can't hear it. Put it down <laughs> okay, now. Okay. Peter, Peter. Is that for you? Because you don't want to hear it. You've ruined me, Mike, and everything now. I don't oh, want to no. hear it. Pete needs my line. Um, so many people have sent me this video, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to see it because it's making me feel that ill. Has loads of people sent you it. Yes, have I haven't, I haven't watched it. But we were, we're, we're in um, our friend um, <laughs> Ellen Ben the other night, oh, and yeah. I stopped the whole party for them to find a microphone <laughs> and set up karaoke on a PlayStation so I could sing shallow. It's getting out of hand. What yeah, is this? I think our weekly while is a couple probably because I go around saying, because uh, Ab goes, right, I'm going to get a microphone. I go, oh, babe, this is going to knock them dead. This is going <laughs> to this is gonna blow go- their so- mind. And uh, I and, and then the people are like, can she sing? And I'm like, you've never heard anything like it. And then, <laughs> then she gets up. <laughs> and I was just looking at her going, oh, my God. I was just, she is sensational. I was looking around and everyone was going like... <laughs> What the hell is this? And as soon as what it stopped, she... as soon as it stopped, everyone just got back to the wedding and the thing. You just carried on as normal song. Like, no one even said, not even around. Like, the there applause. was nothing. No one came over to me and was went... like, "You're an amazing singer." And then we were outside. <laughs> that was everyone was like, that, and, "That was bizarre." And I said, "Oh God, I feel ashamed singing." And the guy was like, "Well, it was acceptable." He was like, "But you're not a singer, though, are you?" So it's fine. <laughs> and I was like. No, I'm not, that's not the point. That's like he was <laughs> killing it. He was he kept you going, fishing for the compliments. He yeah, he literally put you said, in yeah. place. "It's acceptable." He said, "I thought it was okay." I mean, if you, you're not a singer, so <laughs> for that, it was good. Oh, I'd love to have seen that. Oh, it was unreal. Just embarrassing. Was unreal. No one even mentioned it, but it's got to stop. So you need to. I think stop. that was the point. I I thought actually maybe it should now, but I like I love it. Was it that bad? No, it was brilliant. I thought it was a great performance. I could. I think they think they were all wrong. Mm. I think all of them were wrong. <laughs> Frigham. Huh? Frigham. Frigham. Yeah. So you yeah, do that's, you, babe. I am doing me. Yeah. Do you know that the new M&S advert is all about what makes you happy at Christmas? Mm. And I think that is what we should all be doing. I am not one for that philosophy normally. Like you do you. I always like to put others first. And that, it's that's a good philosophy that though, because it feels like everything you do at, at Christmas, and I know obviously it's time for giving and, you know, I get that, you know, and you want to involve everyone, this and that, but also don't don't be spending the whole time doing things because you feel like you have to do them over yeah. Christmas. So guys, you are all uninvited for Christmas dinner. <laughs> Didn't do one. Don't feel like I have to invite you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing me. <laughs> what are we doing for Christmas? What are we doing for Christmas? What am I doing for Christmas, you mean? Yeah, basically, yeah. What You're... are you doing? Well, I'm nearly done, Christmas present-wise. Oh, I'm unreal the organisation. It's only the boys I haven't got. I've been, I'm, you know, actually, that's my other weekly wine. What? I'm, I've also been asking you for is to take me to Smithy's toy oh, shop. Yeah, yeah. 
Because, you know, it's so hard now, because obviously I'm not a child. I don't know what toy I want. And the kids don't really, you know, when we were young, you'd have the Argos catalogue out, you'd be cutting it out, sticking it on, mm. posting it to Father Christmas. They don't watch adverts either and anymore. No like, adverts. They're not on the they're not on the telly, yeah. they're on like YouTube and that. So it's not like So we don't see when, any toy inspo. There's no to- toy inspiration. Mm. The kids not do lists? Well they do a list. Amazon wish list. Yeah, but they don't know any toys either. Yeah, they're a bit young as like jo- boys. Jack likes his Transformers, but he's got them all. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. So we just don't know what to do. Yeah. Okay, well I'll take you to the toy shop. That's what we'll have a do. look. All right, let's get into some audience weekly wines then, okay? You, have you not got a wine for me? Yeah, but, but mine was included in that in that wine, really. It was like, you get up and sing and, and, and I need to stop gathering people and saying... <laughs> I need to stop encouraging it. I need to stop encouraging it. <laughs> you were doing the robot all night as well. No, well, it was a, it's a, it was a crowd pleaser at a wedding. It? <laughs> <laughs> Always goes that way. Yeah. You did the worm. She did the worm. No way. In my head... I was chasing Orange doing the worm, <laughs> but on the video, I'm just lying on the floor. <laughs> there was a kid at the wedding, he said to me, um, do you reckon everyone will uh, let me Sonny, do the worm? Sonny, he was amazing at the yeah, worm. And he, he, and he said, do you reckon everyone will let me on? And like, no one was kind of, so I just I kind of like, we had a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> this kid's got the worm in the locker, Sonny. And he he did it. He was brilliant. And then mm. our buddy goes straight after. Was Sl- it, the slug. Was it the slug. <laughs> like a dead fish. Something fish. wrong with me. I think I'm hilarious and I'm just not. Uh, you did the really worm in Dublin, didn't you? I remember you doing the worm in Dublin, didn't you? Babe, you know what? As long as we're, yeah. t- we're happy, I felt like I was having a great just time. just takes me back to, I'd love to be my own best mate. <laughs> yeah. Imagine how much joy <laughs> one brings on a night out. Yeah, but you were bringing me so much joy. I was watching you do the war- worm and I, I was never been so proud. Yeah, but maybe it's us. Maybe we're just what, absolute we're just twats. fools. <laughs> Do you think we're fools? No, I think you're great. It's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. We are twats, though, probably. Like, there are probably people there going, what the hell are these up to? Yeah, but they're boring. Imagine being... I'd rather be described as a, a funny twat fool than a bore. Agreed. Can you imagine? It's not worse than a boring person. None. Even if they're nice, it's just like, oh, God, <coughs> barge pole. <laughs> Well, At least we're in. on the same page. Yeah, we are on the same page, yeah. I don't know what frigging page it is, but we're on it. We're on the same one. Um, Audience-wise, uh, I had to drop my fiancé off to work this morning in town. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and go to my barber's and get my normal trim. There was a new lad in there, and my normal guy asked if he could cut my hair. I really wasn't keen on the idea, but I thought, what could go wrong? Long story short, my hair looks average, but during the cut, the new guy says, you're handsome, but if you went to the gym, you'd be more handsome. I was like, hey, I know I'm five for eight with a beer belly, but fuck me. I go to the gym four days a week and the pub seven. Have you guys had anything similar? What, where someone's gone like, you should go to the gym? A complete stranger. Yeah, well, you said, you said this the other day when um, someone called you like tall and skinny. And you're like, why is that acceptable? Well, yeah, yeah, no, it was, I was actually, it was funny actually because I was in a petrol station mm. and some fella, like, to be fair, I do get it a lot. Like, I don't know if he's trying to be funny or what, he's just coming, he's like, we said, whoa, how tall are you? Uh, big, say, he said something else. Um, and then the woman behind the counter, because I, I just didn't even really, yeah, I yeah. just thought, you know, I'm six foot seven and just, hopefully he gets off and he did and then the woman said behind the counter he said uh, you should have said to him um, Kwa, you're a fat bastard aren't you <laughs> <laughs> and I was laughing and I thought oh my god she chatting you up she was lovely she was, she was very you funny she was lovely she was Fitness very sport. nice I thought what I'm flirting with the woman in the bloody vacuum you were there you nutcase <laughs> where was I right next to me can't remember that. <laughs> yeah, we were in, uh, I tell you, we were in, um, on the M6 toll. We were in Keel. This is the M6 toll <laughs> services. <laughs> you there. I got a little... I was devastated. Do you know, with a hangover, like you want the most obscure things. Like, I was desperate for an extra large bag of skips. <sighs> and I, I love skips. Mm-hmm. And they had every single Chris you could even imagine. Throwback ones, discos, squares, the lot. <laughs> The, the skip shelf was empty. Oh. So I went for a prawn cocktail. Yeah. What's it? I noticed Ooh, no. that. Yeah. 
That is a weird manoeuvre. I know. Prawn cocktail, what's it? Mm. Yeah, but like with regards to this, the service station incident, it's like, I don't know, it's not like acceptable, isn't it, to say like, if you, you, you wouldn't go to someone, um, how big's your nose? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it seems to be socially acceptable to be able to say you're tall, uh, maybe because it's seen as a good thing. Mm. But uh, any, anyway. Some people have no filter and some people think that they're giving a compliment. Yeah. Maybe they're thinking that. We're like, Foot oh, God, disease. God, you're really good looking, but imagine if you went to the gym. Yeah, like that. I, I just I just would never say that to anyone. A stranger. You, like God, a you, you, stranger. You've got a lovely face. If you went to the gym, got rid of all that, <laughs> yeah. do, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's literally, yeah. literally saying that, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think you should comment like that on people's, unless it's a positive. Yeah, but, but the thing is, that's kind of contradictory to what we said last last week. When you're in a relationship and and the, the other person's letting themselves go and you know starts off with a six different. pack and is now part, going. that's your partner though, like the the fucking trainee barber you let have a loose on you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah, you got to be a good mate. Yeah, haven't you? You got to be a good mate. You got to be a partner. You yeah. got to be close family to be able to say, put on a bit of weight there. Mm. You know, get down the gym. I don't. You know. I don't have do to say it to our Ross because the, the 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 snap in the couch that he just <laughs> did says speaks for me. Says it all. I wonder if there's anyone out there like listeners Joker wise around. that do that as Complex. well. Because I do it. Do you do? Well, yeah, that, like I obviously I dropped from a great height. I, I wonder, hate it. I wonder if there's other other people that. that well, do yeah, that Ross just done it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Broke my couch. So I reckon there's lots of other men that do that. I think we care less about couches, and and we are heavier and taller usually, but not the therapy crouch. <laughs> <laughs> I always look after this one. Okay. All right. So yeah, I agree with you, mate. I think you you within your rights to say piss off. Giving me my other fella back. I bet you still give him a tip at the end of those. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't eat yellow yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they show you the back of their hair. Uh, yeah, that's great, mate. You've got probably a rat's tail going down your back. Absolutely love it. Thanks. It's a fiver. <laughs> it's a fiver. I can't get used to your short hair. I, I, I like it. I, mm. I was fed up with that. I looked a bit like Claire Balding. <laughs> I, I, felt... I love Claire Balding. I, I, love, Claire Claire, Balding. I love Claire Balding as well, but I do. I did have the same haircut. Mm. Haircut? Here, here, cut. Here, cut. Okay. All right. Uh, Abby and Pete, love the pod so much. Thanks for making me laugh every week. So my kids now think I, I'm some sort of witch. <laughs> my seven-year-old George annoyingly got hiccups whilst reading his school book to me last night. I told him to say the magic words, I am not a fish. Do you know what? I think it only works. It doesn't work on everyone. Um, well, these disappeared. George and his sister now con keep constantly asking me how this is possible and where I learnt it. And my God, the possibilities are amazing of where I can go with this. I think I Am Not A Fish has opened up a whole new parenting portal. I love it. Thanks so much. But seriously, how does it work? Love, Sophie. I don't know. I was wondering if it's the way you move your mouth and it's like air going into your lungs or your throat or something. Mm, I've got no idea. I I've had not... a lot of people commenting saying that it works. I know. Yeah. And it worked on me. It worked on me. Because obviously I wouldn't have said it otherwise. Oh, yeah. But I have had a couple saying it doesn't work. But you can't just think it. You, you have to say, say it. it. You have to say the words. It's like going back to what we were talking about on the pod. Like if you think, do you think in your own voice talking to yourself? Or, or do you just do it? Yeah, but I think there's certain things you do, there's some things you talk to yourself. Like, if I needed the toilet, I, I wouldn't go, I might, I'd say to myself, I need the toilet. Yeah, exactly. But I wouldn't go, I'm going to open that door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to get up now yeah. and then open that door. But I would say to well, myself. Well, I don't know, you know. I need a wee. No, because I, I think you just do that. Way. But what I would do is in my head, no, I go, you I do, need a wee. You say, you do the end goal that you're doing. Yeah, but you don't, you don't t talk to yourself about getting. God, up. it's so weird now looking. Because every time I look at something, I'm thinking, look at that jumper. That's a red <laughs> wine. That's a glass with Ribena. Oh, I can't believe we've got the Ribena in here again. Oh, also, do you want to clarify that you didn't actually get rid of Ralphie because someone thought that you rehomed them because of Ribena Gate? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't rehome the dog because of the Ribena Gate, gay, gay, but I've rehomed him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I would never... Ralph's I've... come on the walk with me today. Mm. He's brilliant on the walks. So I have to say, update on Ralph. Um, he's, he's he's on the walks with me like like he's, he's great. He keeps it's up. Absolutely gorgeous little thing. He's just slipped in like yeah. And now he's he's in his he's in his um bed now, isn't he? With, with Jeffrey, and they get on great. Mm. They're running after each other all the time. They love each other. 
Oh. It's a it's been a good addition, if yeah. I'm honest. And um I sorry, can you just say that again? He's, he's been a good addition. <laughs> um and he's actually not a pain in the ass. The mm. only thing he has done is chewed the corner of my couch, but I don't know how you're co coping because I'm a little bit more relaxed around the house. But you know, he does he does still piss and he does still shit around the house and he does chew things. Which he's is chewed the couch, but I'm not, I'm not too bothered because <coughs> but why? I'm getting a new one. Because Pete broke it already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> Size of your balls, John? If only... It... <laughs> the hell? He's on ball, he's all ball and no cock in What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> if only you could see what we have to look at every week. Unbelievable, isn't it? To be fair, I did say take your pants off, I'll wash them. Um, <laughs> no, he's just going to get um, <laughs> Johnny Big Balls. <laughs> So, yeah, so this is amazing from Sophie. So what I'm saying is about the hiccup thing is that I I, I don't know, this is obviously, I don't know how you, if you think this, but I think a fish is like... Yeah. All right? So it's something to do with the... If you go, I'm not a fish, I'm not going to breathe like that. I'm not going to breathe I'm in air breathe. and choke on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think do. that's the science behind it, personally. Could yeah, me be too. Complete bollocks, but that's my thought process. Where could she go? Where could Sophie go with this? Where could she, if, she, if, the, if the kids think that she's a she witch, she could go to Magic Ori and do our, you know, me and Pete, you know, me and Peter psychic. Yeah, you got the gift. I've got the gift. Go on then, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi guys. Listen to, uh, to today's episode while at work. Even though um, Pete laughed at Abby for calling people Galway uh, from Galway uh, Galwegians, she's actually right. The main rugby team are also called the Gorwegians. Please yeah. apologise, Pete. So I apologise. I, I, so I, I just thought it was Glaswegians and I thought you you just made a good quip. When are you gonna... Of Gorwegians. Mm, like, when like, are you gonna get it into your head that I'm always right? You're not always right. As, I am. As if name, not. name one time I was wrong. Um, Go on. Loads of times. You can't. I think of one off my head now. Yeah, of course you can't because there isn't any. There's millions of times. <laughs> there isn't. Well, for starters, where this all came from, when you you said, is this more Munich Galway? <laughs> yeah. That you were wrong that time. Yeah, well, that's just because I'm not a football fan. <laughs> where it fan. came from. But important things. Important things. All right, well, listen, the Galwegian shout was brilliant. I, you know, I actually love the fact that they're called Galwegians. Mm. We should go to Galway and do a pod from there. We should. I feel like you're like an honorary Galwegian now. Because <laughs> I am. Um, it's in me blood. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so you've been a bridesmaid. On this podcast, I want to, I want to dig down on in the, into how you felt, really, because it's the first time you've been maid of honour for your best friend, Holly. It's the first time I've ever been a bridesmaid. Um, Always the bride, never the bridesmaid. Mm, well, I kind of... I did this cringe thing to Chloe and said, oh, I best be one of your bridesmaids. And she was like, oh... I wasn't going to have any bridesmaids. And then and then she was like, oh, yeah. And then all the best friends from school, because I'm not one of Chloe's best friends from school, but I'm one of her best friends. Yeah. But I've kind of opened a can of worms, but I genuinely wasn't being serious. Like, it wouldn't offend me if she didn't choose me. I'd just love to be there on a yeah. special day. But I'm worried that I've put her in a predicament now where she's gone home going, oh, God, now I'm going to have to ask Abby to be my bridesmaid. <laughs> You put the arm on her. She's going to come and sting <laughs> fucking shallows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they definitely will have a live band as well. So, you know, that's going to happen. That will happen. The worm find, will be out. I need to find a new Here song. they come. It's like me and Av go to weddings. She sings shallow, does the worm, and I pull the robot out. <laughs> oh, here they go again. Do you think people must say that about us? I reckon they do. Couple of helmets. Don't Whoops. like them. I reckon, they, I reckon they do. Couple of helmets. <laughs> No, but I, you know, it's just amazing being a bridesmaid. So we all had an amazing suite in this hotel. All mm. got ready together. We all had the matching, you know, Victoria's Secrets robes. Holly looked beautiful. But you know, this kind of girly thing, you know, has really kind of sparked this new like girl, girl vibe I've got going on now. Well, you just want to ditch me and go out with the girls, is that what you're saying? Not ditch you, but make more time for girlfriends. I've always said that to you. You should definitely do that. So we're going to watch Magic Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say do that, did I? Sarah's boyfriend won't let her go. 
Good. Geo Neither does your husband. Neither does your husband. Why on earth do you need to do that? Don't, you don't need to go and see that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's just so so. Why do you want to go and watch naked men dancing around? I don't want to watch naked men, but I, I like to create an ambiance where we're all laughing our heads off. Yeah. You well, know, can get, you not laugh your girls, heads off without penises the in your faces? <laughs> Can you do? Can you not? Are you not capable of doing that? Peter Kay's got to talk coming up. I bet you to get to that instead. I, I bloody love to Maybe get a nice little like bingo set up for you. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a great laugh. Sixty nine meal for two. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I just loved the whole experience and getting Holly ready. And you know, she was probably the most chilled bride ever. There was a few bridezilla moments before the wedding. Mm. So when I got my head and I was like, oh, I'll just put my hair up. She's like, no, you're not wearing your hair up. I've got to wear it down. <laughs> she said that to you? Yeah. Oh. Um, but it was just so special and we were all in, she had these incredible, you know, the old kind of postcard wedding carriages. Yeah. So me and all the girls were in there and we had our lovely bouquet. Holly's sister made all the flowers and which were just incredible. We all had our bouquets. We all had our own black dresses on I loved it but there's a lot of responsibility with the bridesmaid mm, you know because when we were at the altar I'm like oh god are we allowed to fix a dress and then the other ones are looking at me like that you're not fixing a dress you're a fucking maid of honour so it's like do you stand up in the church to fix a dress or whatever um, mm. did you have to do any speeches from, was there any speeches involved yeah some great ones yeah yeah but like from my point of view obviously it's a bit it's a bit lonely being you know a uh, a widower, I suppose. <laughs> a, a bridesmaid widower. Because <laughs> you just, well, where has she gone? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's just with the bride all day. And then I'm, I don't know loads of people at the wedding. So I'm now arriving on my own, chatting to people that I don't really know. And then I'm on a table because she's on the, the main table with... You sit next game. to Holly's brother? Yeah, obviously. I did, they were, Once I got there, mm. there's lots of people that I knew. Yeah. But at first, I, was like, I felt like I was arriving on my own. But yeah, I mean, it, it was actually great. I had a really good time. And then actually, I was Ab was coming over and checking on me, and I was going, oh, piss off, I had a great time here. <laughs> I, I was like, that's happening on the shoulder, peep, peep. And he was just like laughing his head up. And, <laughs> having a great time. <laughs> in mid-conversation, constantly. But it was an amazing wedding. It was great to see like all my old school friends. Mm. It's so bizarre, because I think everyone looks the same, and we're all like nearly 40. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone just, it was just mad. And, like, you know, talking about, you know, all the things we did when we were little. And one of the girls said, um, one of the girls, Keely, a daughter starting school and the head of the school was one of our old teachers. And, and Keely was like, Miss, you don't remember me, do you? She said, um, you were my form teacher. And she went, oh, no, not the Clancy year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was like, oh my God, I didn't think I was that. Reputation procedure. Yeah, and I was fucking hell off. I know, I was like, how, d was, was I, I didn't think I was that bad in school. I'm sure we've done a school episode, haven't we, where we were chatting about how studious you were. <laughs> Listen. Were you just portraying that? No, I was always top of the class, but I was disruptive. I was, you know, I like to, yeah, yeah. like to talk in class. Top of the class, pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. I remember one time when the teacher, the, <laughs> our science teacher was our year head. Mm. She did this massive speech on how you can't have no phones allowed in school. <laughs> uh, I was going mad and she was proper scary. And then she just finished her speech and then my phone was like, baby cakes, you <laughs> just don't know, no. Oh, and she God. went, you, <laughs> get in the cupboard. <laughs> so I had to do no. the whole lesson sitting in a book cupboard. <laughs> On my own. Like a Whoa, dunce. put in the cupboard. Yeah, I was put in the cupboard. <laughs> what, year, what year did you go to school? <laughs> this is senior school. But I, I was um, locked in the cupboard after that. You locked people in the cupboard. See, that day people, age. Isn't yeah. She, was, she wasn't that nice, though. She'd probably be really nice to me now, though. She's like, <laughs> Whoops. Oh. But, you know, she wasn't nice. I remember yawning once in, in someone's <laughs> class. Am I boring you? <laughs> yeah, it was one of those. It was a big yawn. It was a massive monster. And I didn't even know he was looking at me. And then he, he threw the chalk at me. <laughs> and it pinged off my head. I, oh. Oh, I remember falling asleep. We used to, me and my friend Laura, we used to sit in class, tickling each other's arm. And like the teacher would be like under the desk like that. Then I started like this. 
And you go like that. And then, then, then uh, the next day I was just fully asleep on the no. desk. The teacher going around, whack, whack the desk. And no. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's not, not funny though, they're being in trouble in school, oh, I don't think. So no, where you're funny. like trying to hold your laugh in. So, so funny. funny. Yeah, I remember we got into trouble for uh, meditating. It was raining and we all snuck in one playtime. And meditated. And the teacher come in and we were all sitting in the, in the circle in the floor and they were like, what are you doing? We were like, nothing. And we made up that we were meditating. We weren't. We were just sitting there like chatting. But we thought if we said something like meditating, they might go, oh, that's a nice nice yeah. thing to do and get away with it. But they didn't. And we um, we had to get that. Up. They I saw know. right through that. I know, yeah. <laughs> and we had to get up in assembly and demonstrate what we were doing. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so funny. Good though. punishment, though. So <laughs> funny. But no, when you like the fear, but the laugh yeah. at the same time, and you're like trying not to laugh, and you're terrified of the consequence. So, so one did of you ever do that one where you're waiting outside the headmaster's office? Yeah. Head Can't office? imagine you doing that because you're a blood blip for goody two shoes. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a few of them. I'm waiting outside the headmasters. What for? It, like nothing bad. I mean, I was always it was always just laughing and joking and doing things like that. Like mm. we do, we play games where we wouldn't move from the playground uh, to go to our lessons, and then like obviously the, the the teacher comes, then the head of year comes, then the headmaster comes, and you, the first one to move, so you, you can't. You can't <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so, so like even the so headmaster's bad. going, if you don't go now, that's it. Like detention, suspension, all yeah. this kind of things to throw at you, and I'm going, I'm not going, I'm fucking going. <laughs> <laughs> then one of the lads would break and you go, ah, shit bag. <laughs> so who, who went first out of your mates? It was Herman. Um, well, you know, obviously paint dry was, if he, we'd always try and rope him in because obviously he'd go first. And then, um, <laughs> and then, and then we'd, always, we'd always try and get a random who wasn't as diehard as us <laughs> to get involved because we just watch them squirm because we'd usually be quite good at it. And then they'd go and then we'd... But yeah, that, so that, stuff like stupid things like that. Yeah. Like, Mine was always like was that. Never, it Tough was never theory. big trouble. Do you know what I mean, I was never, there was other stuff going on. I was never involved in any of that. It's not funny, not better, is there? No, in this school. Teachers, teachers in our school, they were proper cruel. <laughs> Sounds like locking you in cupboards. Yeah, she didn't, I don't think she shut the door, but I was locked in the cupboard for, my whole, for the whole lesson. Hmm. I was in isolation as well. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. I was on report. I had to do all my lessons in the library on my own. Yeah, I think that's, that happens, doesn't it? If you're on report. I was never on report. I was on report. Do you know why I was on report? Because one of the girls got into trouble, got sent out to the assembly. And as she was got up and walking out, I hugged her. Sure. The teacher went, oh, hugging her, are we? You, you, that, you that concerned? You can go too. Oh, hey. And that was that. Is it back to bridesmaids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we got a, we got a whole friggin' school school left episode. There. Yeah, in, in that definitely. I love to talk about school. But anyway, let's go back to bridesmaids. I, I, in my in one of my kids' cause schools, yeah. I couldn't believe it. So we went for this like prize given night. They had inspirational people doing a speech. And they had this person who was a contestant on Strictly who went out in the first fucking round. <laughs> and here's me sitting in the audience going, I won this. And I won Strictly. And you haven't asked me to do the most, most motivational speech. <laughs> I was, couldn't believe it. I was sitting there. And I was like, is this a joke? Just talking about being on Strictly and all that. And, you know, this and that. And I was looking at her. She, I was like, he was just you, Googling did you win this? <laughs> he was Googling her and going, like in the silence, Googling her going, she went out on the first round. <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing up there? And I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting there fuming. Uh, she was a good speaker, though. She was, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> she actually really was, but she did go out in the first round. True. Um, did you enjoy it, though? Would you be a bridesmaid again? Are you looking forward to being a bridesmaid again, maybe for Chloe, if she asks you? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to do it all again at Chloe's wedding. <laughs> oh, Chloe. Sorry, Chloe. <laughs> I'm joking. I am jo Chloe. If you're listening, this is a complete joke. No, but I, I loved it. I loved the responsibilities. You know, it was nice to all be together. And you know, Holly is my ride or die best friend from school, mm. from babies, and 
she deserves this happy ending and it was just she looked incredible and just to be in the room and see how loved she is and know just all the girls like wanting her to look her best making sure mm. her hair and makeup the dress everything was perfect um it was just so nice to be a part of and i've met a load of new friends now who are holly's friends who were great who we went on the hindu with and you know we're all on our group we had the wedding together danced all night and it, it was just great mm. so yeah I, I loved it and I, i'm like a, a bit of an organizer person so i like it although laura did take over mm. she's more organized than me <laughs> cool you brought the fun i brought the fun she brought the you brought the Schedule. worm. She yeah, she brought the worm. <laughs> she brought the itinerary. And the shallow. <laughs> now, Laura's, Laura's so much fun, but she's, I thought I was organised. She's ten times more organised than I am. Oof. But, um... Cool. Cool. Agony abs? I her boyfriend's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you met him, Josh? Oh, do you know what we him. did? And I broke the code. So, uh, you know, after the wedding, the wedding's a long day. We've been up since eight. We had loads of food. Yeah. Loads of food in the, um in the room when we were all getting ready. Then we all went to the church and then the bride and groom went back in the cars and the, some of the kids that there went back in the other car. So Holly put on a coach with all like drinks and stuff, but we went in the car with Laura and a boyfriend and stopped at McDonald's on the way to the park. <laughs> 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 well, that made... was a pack that we'd never talk about that again. Yeah, but I told people on the night. Did you? You were rat you. I told <laughs> Stella. I <laughs> rat you. <laughs> I told Stella. I, but Stella... We, we said in the car, we can't ever speak of this again. <laughs> I know. So I just assumed that's what we were doing. I know. You're well, telling the podcast. <laughs> I know. But I told Stella, one of the other bridesmaids, and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. But Pete was starving. Yeah. He don't was, blame I, me. It was all you were going to be sick. I can't wait to eat. I have to, don't blame me. It was Laura. It was no. Laura. Oh my God, she throw, she's ratting people out and throwing them under the bus now. <laughs> It was Laura's fella, Josh. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We don't know him as, as well. <laughs> it was Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we were on time. Little quick drive through. A few chicken nuggets. Yeah, do you know what? It was totally fine. And, then, and I, I actually really enjoyed my meal as well. So it actually worked out for... Oh, the food was amazing. Everyone's benefit. Food was amazing. How did you cope without me, though? Were you missing me or not? Um, I, I always miss you when I'm apart from you. But um, I coped pretty well. It mm -hmm. was. It, I had a great time. Everyone was lovely. Uh, actually, it was it, we, we, our table had a real, real good crack. Yeah, so, he's been uh, laughing the whole yeah. time. I was like peeking behind the flowers. Like, what's he laughing at? Yeah, we had a we had a good time. It was a great wedding, mm. and it was good. you looked beautiful as well. So, if if I was like, if you were single, would you like be Cop like off with trying the bridesmaid? To, would you be checking me out? Hundred percent. You look sensational. <laughs> you did. All right, let's get into the agony abs. Firstly, love the pod. Uh, I'm marathon training and you've both had me laughing through the runs. Now on to my wine. I know my girlfriend's a listener, so I'll keep this anon. We've been together for four plus years and along the whole, we couldn't be happier. But there's one thing that's been annoying me. We go out a lot together, uh, but we also often go out separately. Uh, whenever I go out with my mates, I make the effort to tiptoe to bed and get to sleep without waking her. The same cannot be said for my girlfriend when she goes out with her mates. To paint the scene, when she's out, I treat myself to a takeaway, war zone and an early night. But almost... War zone? What's that? Uh, Xbox game. Yeah, game, I imagine. But almost every time, this is entirely ruined, as she comes home at 3am, wakes me up wanting to snog and cuddle. Snog. As much as I love my girlfriend, it's not pleasant being woken up woken up by her uh, trying it on when honking of rosé and 20 McNuggets. <laughs> A fairly simple question. Pete, this is exactly... How do I get her to stop? Thanks, Andres and on Yesta. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Yeah. The thing is... P.S. It was her birthday last week. Happy birthday, darling. Well, he's totally given who they are away. Yep. They've been together four plus years. I think he secretly wants, wants her to find yeah. herself. So, but that that's what I say to you. You know, if you go oh. out and, like, get absolutely car parked and then come and try and, like, want to kiss me and stuff, I'm like, get away. It's, there's nothing more off-putting. But I think... <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Go out for a couple of drinks with your friends. <laughs> There's nothing worse. I'd rather die. But the thing is, I know if I came in, in pissed at three in the morning mm. and tried to try it on with Pete, stinking of rosé and chicken nuggets, he would 
be well up for it. Yeah, Pun back. Rat of a dream. I, I was just thinking eyelid. the same thing. Yeah. Oh. What's he come out to moon and Oh my god. <laughs> I would be. Where do you want me? <laughs> no, I don't like. I don't like. What's the matter with this fella? You can't. It can't be one person drunk and the other one not. Unless it's you. <laughs> Unless it's me. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I'm, I'd be pretty comfortable with it. Uh, if you'd thrown up three seconds before, I'd, I'd still be up for it. <laughs> yeah, I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Is that, is that, that's not a bad thing, is it? Surely, like, I think you're sensational. Oh, shut up. you got, got to stop saying this. What? I it's think the you're same sensational. As the, yeah. What do you want me to say? It's the same as the singing thing. What, you lure me into your... a self f- f- false sense of fucking security. Boosting your confidence. I mean <laughs> it, God's though. sake. What, how you can you get... Come on, Pete, tell her how it really is. Tell her how it really is. Hold on, how can you get fucking screamed at? <laughs> how can you get screamed at for saying she's gorgeous? You need to I, stop. I, what do you want me to say? Nothing. Crap at singing and your ugly bent has been. Yes. <laughs> has been. <laughs> Can help you with where I come from. Hey, that's what she wants. So that's what you must think. Then? That's what I think. I think, I, think, I think you've lost it. I think you, you're rip porky now. Um, you know, you, light hairs, diabolical. Um, like, is that what you want? Of course you don't. You want me to say Sorry, you're gorgeous? I just need to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I genuinely mean no, that. No, but I don't like that to... either. Exactly. Just so don't say anything. Oh, fucking no, I just won't talk then. Get back in your box, please. You talk to Ross for the whole pod. <laughs> no, anyway, what I'm saying is I don't, I, I, I'm, I'd be in 100%. In? Uh, but you wouldn't come on to me when you pissed. You'd go, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Put your dressing gown on. Yeah. And maybe throw up and then go to bed. I don't get drunk. It's the difference. I think he should. I think he should what? Grow up. Yeah, I, I think he should grow up. I think he should grow up as well. Like from from his point of view, she's she's coming well, on to I you. Think it's a good thing. Worse is he's sitting on his own playing on a fucking PlayStation. Yeah, but they like to go out sometimes on their own. <coughs> yeah, but what kind of person sits on their own playing the PlayStation? About about five hundred million people worldwide. I've never played on the PlayStation <laughs> once in my life. Never mind sitting on my own till 3 a.m. on one. People do. Mm. Do you? No. Well, people do. Okay. You're not a gamer. That's fine. Neither am I. I'm not a gamer. Hi, Abby and Pete. I love, love, love the podcast. It's bloody hilarious. It's bloody fabulous. I said hilarious in my accent. Uh, this is a bit different. Relationship related, but not romantic. I found out... Ooh. I found out my best friend of 35 years slept with my grown-up son. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> she was in her 40s and he was in his 20s. I was a young mum, 16, so although, so although both consenting adults, my friend actually fed my son his bottle and changed his nappies. Then years later, they're having it off. I felt so betrayed and disgusted. We had a fallen out before I knew. I felt this was one-sided, she was so spiteful and cruel. We could have reconciled, but I found out about their beaver aubergine about six months later. I cut all ties with my whole friend group. As I learned, they all knew and had kept it from me. I felt devastated. I didn't know who I could trust. I felt so betrayed. This has left me without any of my friends, feeling so isolated and heartbroken. Ooh. I haven't discussed it with her or any of them. I've tried to reconnect with a couple of them, but I was just ignored. Should I rake over hot coals or leave it and move on. Oh, that's that's not nice. It's not nice. Firstly, I'd like to say, what a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Stifler's mama's got it going on. Before I get onto the serious business, of, <laughs> what a swordsman. Um, Peter? <laughs> So would you, would you sleep with one of your mates? No, 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 no. That was obviously a joke. But what would you do if I slept with one of Johnny's? Friends? No, I think it's absolutely awful. Absolutely outrageous. No, absolutely awful. I'm just saying, look, from the young lads, from the young lads' point of view, like he's uh, not when he's five. Obviously, when he's an adult. In his friend group, obviously, he's going to be seen as a bit of a bit of an edge, whatever. Pete, he's but not. He's babe. Yeah, there's no denying that. We're not talking about him. I know, but I, exactly. So what I'm saying is, firstly, let's get that out of the way. That was a gag, right? But 
from her point of view, that is horrendous. She's lost her friends because of it. Um, she should never have done it, obviously. Um, but then she's trying to reach back out to these it's girls. It's like even if like a friend... And they're ignoring her. I think it's a no-go zone. <laughs> completely. You tell us what you think then. I think it's a no-go zone and I can totally see why she's so hurt. I think... I would hate that to happen to my son. But I think none of my friends would do that. <clears throat> What do you think? You you couldn't do that to one of your mates' mums, could you? No, no. Well, um, it's, it's, <laughs> Not last time. It's, uh, He's like going through them in his head, going, which one would I? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> no, I don't think it's for the uh, lads. Sharon. The, or... <laughs> it's not the lad's fault, is it? Really, I don't think. Like, he's, she's brought it, like, been around when she, he was a baby. Mm. That's what she's saying. It was completely wrong what she's done. And it's also wrong that she's not, she's reached out to her and she's not, they're not getting back to her. You know, she should apologise, you know, because, you know, people make mistakes. People mm. have moments of madness and it could have been one of those. I'm not obviously defending it at all, but, you know, if she would was to come, you know, it's fact that she, everyone in the group knew about it apart from her. You know, if she would have come and said, oh my God, this happened, I'm mortified, I apologise... <laughs> you know, maybe they they could salvage some kind of friendship, but I think how they've treated her is awful. And if I was if I was her, I'd just give them a wide berth. Mm, maybe do I that. I just don't think you need people like that who you can't trust in your life. She can't be your best mate if she's done that to you, really, can she? So you better no, off without her. Absolutely not. Okay, so no, I enjoyed that part. It was it was nice, you know, going back to Liverpool, seeing my dad, mm. going down memory lane, with, you know, seeing all my my old school friends and. The wedding was phenomenal. We didn't talk about you being a best man. Yeah, but listen, I I loved being a best man. It was great. Um, you know, the speech thing, you could tell at the wedding we went to, it's hard, oh, it's, it's hard for them that he, he, they both did a great job. I remember, do you remember the best man at one point, the, like the room, the venue had like this mezzanine and at one point before the speeches, the best man was sitting up there like practicing his speech. Uh -huh. You know, it's a big deal, isn't it? Have you done a speech? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I have. Yeah, I, I did. I quite enjoyed it. It was good. It's nerve wracking, really nerve wracking. But I think once you get over it, it kind of ruins your day a bit as a best man. Mm. But once you've got over it, it's, uh, it's good, and you, you, you kind of feel involved in the wedding. It's good. good yeah, fun. Holly's dad wasn't allowed to drink until he'd done a speech. Yeah, and so he def funny. he'd definitely been listening to the pod because he opened with a few doctor doctor knock knock jokes. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what his joke was. <laughs> He said, um, I went into the doctors. He said, Doctor, I keep getting a pain every time I do that. The doctor went, Well, don't be doing that then. <laughs> 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 well, I liked it. It was a good one. <laughs> but, it, you know, oh, broke the ice. And, you know, everyone did a great job. I was and sitting next to uh, Holly's brother, and Holly was there. And uh, after the dad had finished the speech, the, they both went to each other, like whispered kind of like mouth to each other, it wasn't actually that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and they went, Yeah. Not too bad. Uh, I, he did, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. He did a great job. He did a great job. No, no I love a well. wedding. Yeah. They were worried he was going to get to have a few too many drinks. But no. I actually think good. we should do another one. What? For uh, our, another wedding? For our... Um, we, we, we renewed our vows after 10 years. I know. Let's but do I it think after 50 next time. 50? <laughs> Five O. Five O's the next big one, isn't it? No. Maybe. 15? <laughs> 15? No. No way. 25. 20. <laughs> Can we meet in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> 20 then. All right. We'll see you next week. See you next week, folks.